Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In the past two lessons, lessons seven and eight, we've been talking about analyzing architecture. We first, in lesson seven, looked at structural decay and kind of defined that. And then in lesson eight, the prior lesson, we took a look at defining components, those building blocks that we're actually analyzing. In this lesson, lesson nine, we'll be taking a look at some of those macro techniques of analyzing software architecture. In the prior two lessons, I showed you this image, and I'm going to continue to show it as long as we're in this analyzing software architecture kind of lesson uh, thread here because it's important imagery. Because what we're really analyzing when we take a look at architectures are finding these cracks and seams in these pylons holding up our actual application. Because the more seams we end up getting, the less structural integrity we will actually have in our architectures, i.e. in our applications. So now, now in these further lessons, including this one, we're going to actually see how to determine what these cracks really are and what they mean when we apply it to actual software. There's two ways of actually identifying structural decay. The first is to take a look at a micro level technique. This is really analyzing the source code to actually infer and find and identify architectural structural decay, architectural decay. But another technique is macro type of techniques. This is where we don't actually look at the lines of source code, but actually focus on the components and other elements of the architecture to find those cracks and seams in those pylons actually holding up our application. So let's take a look at some of these general macro techniques and macro detection. Now for this particular lesson, we're going to take a look at the general structural decay indicators. These are structural decay indicators that are cracks and seams in those pylons, irrespective of what kind of architecture or pattern you're using, whether it be microservices, whether it be microkernel, you could be space-based, layered, event-driven, service-based, it doesn't matter at all because all three of these general indicators do apply. And those three indicators are static coupling levels. Every one of the lines between each of these components is in fact a crack in that pylon. And so obviously the more static coupling we have, the more that architecture is going to fall apart. Now the other thing we're going to take a look at is temporal coupling. And these are non-static dependencies, but also still a form of coupling, a lot harder to identify. And the third is quite simply the component size. Now I'm going to actually start here on the right hand side with the component size. And when we take a look at the size of the component, these are easy metrics to gather in any sort of tool or even your own hand-rolled code crawler. Um, what we're really looking for is a component, again from the prior lesson, really is defined as a package structure in your application, or in the case of a microservice, most likely the service itself. And what we're taking a look at are two different metrics, either the number of classes, or types I should say, because it could also include interfaces as well, but the number of types, i.e. classes, and also the number of lines of code. These are really two good indicators to really tell the size of the component. Now, in general, when we start to talk about structural decay, linking to static and temporal coupling, the component size directly impacts that because generally the larger the component, the more coupled it will generally be to other components. And this is just one thing I found. In other words, especially to reduce coupling, generally we create and split components up. And so tracking that component size is really helpful for determining not even just levels of modularity and in evolvability, but also we want to tend to keep our components fairly small. Now let's take a look at static coupling levels. There's two kinds of static coupling types. There's afferent and efferent. Afferent coupling says, let's say that's you, component A, who talks to me? This is afferent coupling. In my opinion, this is much more important than efferent coupling because if I break my code, or let's say it's even a service that happens to go down, who am I impacting? And so that's why afferent coupling is so important. As a matter of fact, all three of those lines uh, sure enough, are cracks in the overall structure of our application. Efferent coupling, on the other hand, really says, who am I 
dependent on. And it's easy to remember, A comes before E. And so A becomes before means who's talking to me. E, exit, who do I talk to? So I usually remember it, A comes before E. But every one of the components I talk to forms a coupling level between those components, which starts tearing down all these kind of illities, meaning that every one of those lines is in fact a crack. And that's a good way to visualize those lines. Now, temporal coupling is a form of coupling. It's non-static coupling based on timing dependencies. For instance, maybe I've got a case where a component A, and let's start with the left-hand side, um, requires an orchestration to call component B and component C, but component B must be called before component C. Now, B and C are temporally coupled because they know nothing about each other. However, C cannot call before B. There's a timing dependency here, especially if you look at the right-hand side, B and C both need to be invoked within the context of a single transactional unit of work. In other words, B does some work, C does some work. They don't know about each other, but collectively, they have to have one atomic unit of transaction. And so this is an example of temporal coupling. You know, temporal coupling is much more dangerous, in my opinion, than static coupling because there's no tool in existence right now that will find all these forms of temporal coupling. What it requires is something called uh, code forensics. As a matter of fact, a wonderful book uh, you can find on developertoarchitect.com, at least the reference to it under books, is a book by Adam Tornhill. And it's called Your Code is a Crime Scene. And it shows how to analyze code to actually find these levels of temporal coupling within your code. The point is, whether it's afferent, efferent, or even temporal coupling, the component coupling and component size can create a mess in your architecture. For example, whether these are service calls or whether these are components communicating, every one of those communication lines is a crack in a pylon. As a matter of fact, you see the darker ones where towards the bottom there, that's commons logging. And if we take a look at where the lines start converging, those are actually seams in that pylon. And you can start to identify this is exactly what happens right here, this picture you're seeing, if we don't pay attention to this level of coupling. And this is a form of architectural decay. This kind of system has high risk, high deployment, low testability, uh, low maintainability, and low agility. In other words, this starts impacting all of those important illities, those architecture characteristics that matter to us. So these three types of structural decay indicators, static coupling, temporal coupling, and component size, are independent of the kind of pattern that you're using. Now, what we're going to see in further lessons, in lesson 10 specifically, is we're going to take a look and continue this analyzing architecture kind of, of theme, but we're going to be taking a look at the macro techniques specifically for microservices. And what are the general decay indicators to think or to know how are we going to be in trouble or, or is this architecture really the right one for us by taking a look at macro techniques within a microservices um, ecosystem or architecture style. And that will be the next lesson. So this has been Software Architecture Monday. Stay tuned where we're going to continue with this analyzing architecture for, for a few more lessons to take a look at some of the macro and micro techniques, especially within certain architecture patterns. Thank you very much.